Okay. So this week we will go with waveguides with chapter eight is the applications of the Maxwell's equations, and it is commonly used in uh, transmission of the electromagnetic waves in optical fibers, communications, and it's an engineering problem. But this week I am going to devote to the waveguides, and we will see lots of applications of the uh, Maxwell's equations. So, first of all, so basically if you have a waveguide, you have walls of the waveguide and the electromagnetic waves reflected through those waves and through those uh, walls. So, first of all, we have to investigate the behavior of the electromagnetic wave near the conductor. So, let us let us stay a conductor here. Let's say we have the conductor and some electromagnetic wave propagating. Let's say K. It is what the electromagnetic wave has electric field and magnetic fields. So they are all mutually orthogonal to each other. So propagation direction of the wave and the E and H fields are mutually orthogonal to each other. And how they will behave near the conductor. So basically we have to think about the, what we know. We know that some boundary conditions of the electric and magnetic uh, fields. What are those things? So perpendicular, so if let us denote a normal vector to the surface, so this is a normal vector to the surface. So if you have a co conductor and the medium, we have the E and H fields and uh, how these E electric and magnetic fields uh, behave near the conductor. So one thing is the following. So when the electromagnetic wave in, uh, interact with the conductor, it will induce free charges. Let us say that the surface charge density per unit area and it will induce a, some surface current density K. That is the surface current density. So basically the electric field components of the waves and the H also will create a, a currents and basically if you have a good conductor, very good conductor, everything will be reflected back. So basically this reflection is the basic principle of the mirrors. So if you have a mirror, basically glass in the mirror does not any effect. So the one side of the glass is coated by a good conductor, let's say silver. Okay, and the wave comes there, it reflects back. How it reflects? Because it, it induces some current at the surface of the silver. Okay, and that reflection is uh, making an uh, angle of phase of 180 degrees. And so some E field induce currents here and it reflect back and we can see our image in the in the mirror. So glass is holding that the silver coat. Okay. But some part of the electromagnetic wave penetrates the conductor and decay. So basically we have to know that the boundary conditions. So let us say that this is a psi at zero. At, at the boundary at psi equal to zero, what we have? We have normal components of electric displacement. 
uh, let us say out and in and that difference is equal to surface uh, charge density. So if it is a perfect conductor, we don't expect any electric field and electric displacement. So therefore, in the conductor, this will be zero. So basically, n dot d near the conductor have to be equal to surface charge density. So out means near the conductor. This region, let us call this region is out and in. Let us call that, okay? Near the conductor. So near the conductor, perpendicular component uh, of the relative to the surface of the electric displacement are much more dominated. So this is one boundary condition and that is the behavior near the conductor. And what else we have? We have tangential component of the magnetic field. So let us write this N cross H out minus H in have to be equal to what? What will be the tangential component of the difference of the uh, tangential components of the magnetic field at the surface? That should be the surface uh, current density. So close to the, so inside the, if we have a close to the perfect conductor, we don't expect any magnetic field in the conductor and that goes out to zero, this term we don't expect and we therefore n cross h near the conductor have to be uh, surface current density, tangential components of the magnetic field near the conductor is equal to surface current density. So what are the other boundary conditions? Normal component of B magnetic induction have to be zero differences of the uh, normal component of the magnetic inductions have to be zero. So basically what can we for what can we say for this? If we have a close to the perfect conductor, we don't expect any B in the conductor. But there is nothing here. What does it mean? So if this is zero, then normal component of the B have to be what? If you say this, if there is no field in the conductor, and then that means that the perpendicular component of what? B have to be what? zero or close to zero. So from that, if you decompose the components of the E and H parallel to the surface and perpendicular to the surface, the situation is the following. Near the conductor, the perpendicular component of E is stronger from the first boundary condition. Okay, because we have some free sur surface current, uh, sur free surface charge density. Tangential component of H is stronger, but near the conductor, normal component of the B is not stronger, close to the zero. Okay, so therefore, near the conductor, ideally this should be zero. Let's say B let's say H perpendicular and other boundary condition what are the other boundary conditions? N cross E tangential component of E electric field 
outside and inside difference of the tangential component at the boundary have to be equal to zero and if you have a good conductor E will be zero that means that the tangential component of the electric field is close to zero so so near the conductor basically E tangential and H perpendicular is not dominated. They are small values close to zero, but the dominated waves of the electromagnetic waves are E perpendicular and uh, H parallel components. So if you have a, if you consider the electromagnetic wave near the conductor, first of all, from those boundary conditions, you have some information. What is that information? perpendicular component and the tangential perpendicular component of the electric field and the tangential components of the uh, H fields are stronger relative to the tangential components of electric field and the perpendicular component of the what? H field. One thing. So if it is ideal, they are just zero. If it is not ideal, some field will penetrate and they will decay. So that penetration is called the skin depth. So first we are going to uh, derive the skin depth using the Maxwell's equations, some of the Maxwell's equations. Now let us say that, let us allow that the, our conductor is not perfect, has some conductivity. and we are going to allow some field to penetrate the conductor. So what we have? We have modified Ampere's law, curl of H, C means conductor, okay? Now we are working in the conductor. Is the source. What is the source? Current density. Actually, that is the that is the uh, surface current density, and it has the del d over del t derivative of the electric displacement, but in the conductor that is not very strong so we can ignore this so I will come to this point later because what we know in the conductor if the conductivity are high electric field is low and so we will see that H field the magnetic field in the conductor is much more stronger than the electric field in the conductor therefore we will ignore this term so we have some current density. Why we have some current density? Because of the electromagnetic waves. It creates uh, some oscillation. And here, let's say in silver or any good conductor, it, the, the H field of the electromagnetic field uh, derives a current density at the surface and in at the penetration of the conductor. So now we know that one another thing, current density. With the Ohm's law, current density and electric field are related. What is the relation between the current density and the electric field? Conductivity times the electric field is the current density. And this electric field is the field in the conductor. So we have curl of H, which is equal to conductivity times the uh, electric field in the conductor. And from here, we can write that the E is 1 over conductivity curl of H. 
So let us pick up another uh, Maxwell's equation related with the curves. Uh, that is the Faraday's equations. Curl of E in the conductor plus del V over del T is equal to zero. So fields has time dependent forms at the order for harmonic terms is at the order of at, at it's oscillating at frequency omega as a e to the minus omega t part of the plane waves you can think about that and at the inside the conductor that fields will oscillate uh, as a minus uh, e to the minus i omega t and therefore del over del t could be replaced by minus i omega. So this term becomes curl of E minus i omega and instead of B you can write that uh, you can allow to say the magnetic permeability and uh, electric permeability. So you can write this in terms of H that becomes minus i omega mu h and the conductor have to be zero and from here we can write h as minus i over mu frequency of the wave curl of e so we have two equations in terms of the curves. Now what we are going to do, we will introduce what we can do for the curve. Uh, we will not do anything for the curve, sorry, for gradient. For gradient, I'll take the following. So normal vector to the surface is n. And I will take the gradient as minus n in one dimensional del over del psi. So if you do this, you are going to obtain instead of field in the electric field in the conductor you will get EC minus 1 over conductivity and cross del H over del Xi. So instead of gradient here, just replace minus N head over del Xi. And for H field in the conductor, you have a minus sign, minus minus plus, you will get I over mu frequency and cross del E over del psi. So now we have that form. So next I'll try to combine those things, E electric field and the H field, they are in the conductor, source is the current density and current density induced by electric field, so every information here we have. Now let us try to relate the two equations, electric field and H. So take the n cross of h, n cross of h will be what? I over mu frequency of the wave and 
and cross and cross del E over del Xi. You have H here. You take the N cross of H. Let us go one more step. We have I over mu frequency N cross open parenthesis. We have an N cross here. And let me take the del over del psi. And instead of electric field in the conductor, let me write this whole term. That is equal to minus 1 over conductivity and cross del H over del psi. Close this parenthesis, close the big parenthesis. Okay? I take n cross h and here so the, the, here you have the n cross n cross del over del psi the electric field is plugged here so collecting the things you will obtain minus i over conductivity mu frequency and that becomes <coughs> del square, del over del square of psi. And you have triple uh, cross products and cross the first one and cross second one and and cross the third one. H. Close this one, close the other one, these two close and close the bigger one. So you have a triple cross product here. So say this is a A vector, say this is a B vector and this is a C vector. So the double cross product rule tells you that A dot C along B minus A dot B along C. So what is A dot C? A dot C is N dot H. The, this is along N minus A dot B is N unit vector along uh, H. This is one. What is the N dot H? from the boundary conditions. That is what, and that H is what? Perpendicular components of the magnetic field. Just look at here, what is the perpendicular component of the magnetic field near the conductor? Close to zero, zero. In the conductor, we will take as a zero. There will be some value, but it is very, very low relative to the uh, tangential component. Okay, tangential component of the H is important in the conductor tangential to the surface is important. So we will take this as a zero. Practically it's close to zero, but we will take just directly as zero. Okay? So we have but we have minus h that will be n cross h. We have minus minus plus. So arranging the terms you are going to obtain the following. You are going to obtain the following. Del over del psi and cross h plus 2i sigma mu frequency over 2 multiply by divide by 2 and cross h is equal to 0. Everything should be okay. The sign should be okay. And
you can write this in the following form also n cross del square over del xi square h plus 2i conductivity mu frequency over 2h uh, and you can look at the solution of this differential equation I will just directly so let us raise the sum parts and write the solution. So the solution in the, is in the following form. So this quantity in the parentheses is called a skin depth. You may see in the chapter 5 in the first part of the course so that is called 1 over delta and that is the skin depth its practical values at the order of centimeters so electromagnetic waves can penetrate the conductor at the order of centimeters and so on so let me write this again so this is this factor is called as a skin depth 2 over mu frequency sigma 1 half the solution of the differential equation is exponential the field in the conductor h field in the conductor mainly close to the h parallel from the boundary conditions and it's decaying exponentially that is e to the minus psi over skin depth and at the same time is oscillating e to the psi over skin depth so this is the H field in the conductor. Indeed, if you substitute this, it will satisfy. So, if you take the second derivative, what you are going to obtain? I minus 1 square, and I minus 1 square is 2i, and divided by uh, 1 over second depth. And if you take this, you will get the 1 over skin depth square. So, sorry about this, should be 1 over skin depth square. Then, skin depth is the square root of 2 on that term. So, you will get 2 minus 2i 1 over skin depth square. That will be uh, sigma mu frequency over 2. So, if you substitute this, you can see automatically this solution is satisfying to this differential equation. So, basically, H field will penetrate the conductor, rapidly decay, and the exponential lowering amplitude is at the order of skin depth. So, basically, at that will decay as a e to the minus psi over skin depth and it will go to the 1 over e value at the skin depth and that is small at the order of centimeters. So you can calculate that the electric field on the, of the conductor. So how you can do? electric field in the conductor will be what from there that will be 1 over conductivity and cross del h over del psi so if you take this derivative here you are going to obtain what 
we are going to obtain so let us substitute that and take the derivative what you are going to obtain if you take the derivative you will get uh, you have the minus sign that is minus 1 plus i that becomes 1 minus i you have n cross h parallel from here if you take the partial derivative with respect to the psi and you have exponential term e to the minus psi over delta e to the plus i psi over skin depth some coefficient there what is that coefficient that will be 1 over sigma was there from the partial derivative you will have 1 over skin depth so this is conductivity this is skin depth skin depth could be written in terms of conductivity so you have two conductivity terms there so you can write this in the following form so pick up this term 1 over sigma times the skin depth and you will get 1 over sigma square root of mu frequency conductivity over 2 and that will be mu frequency over 2 sigma so am I right 1 over conductivity 1 over sigma 1 over sigma is square root of mu frequency conductivity over 2 so this goes to here that becomes in the following form so therefore you can obtain that the electric field in the conductor in the following form magnetic permeability frequency over 1 over 2 conductivity 1 minus i n cross h and the exponential term e to the minus psi over delta plus i psi over delta is the amplitude wise let me tell you if you look at the amplitude of h and e if you have a good conductor you can see automatically that e is less relative to the h why the amplitude of e is related with the amplitude of h but you have one over conductivity if you have a perfect conductor conductivity goes to infinity and the electric field drops to zero if you have a good conductor if you have a typical values you will get this number as small so in the conductor the dominated term is the uh, magnetic field now let us try to study that the power loss basically what is the our aim we are we have the information of skin depth and we will study the wave guides quickly in this week and we will have reflections through the walls the walls of the the wave guide will be conductor so they are not perfect ideal good conductors not but not ideal let's say cooper so in each reflection there will be some there will be loss of the transmission of the electromagnetic wave because of the what skin depth some some of the waves will penetrate and the most of them reflect it so basically we have to know that the power loss uh, in the conductor so if you know that the power loss in the conductor we can handle that the, how the wave propagate in the wave guide or we can find that the attenuation coefficient or extinction coefficient of the electromagnetic waves in the wave guide so this is practically simple 
we can calculate that the power loss of the electromagnetic wave at the conductor. But we need it. We have a pointing vector, E cross H, energy per second per area. It's a vector, but we have the surface. We can calculate that the energy loss at the surface energy loss per time at the surface of this conductor at psi equal to zero. So these are depending on psi, we can calculate the power loss or absorbed power at the conductor, power loss on the conductor or absorbed power at the conductor at the surface of the conductor is 1 over 2 real part of n dot e cross h complex conjugate. So let us look at this. e cross h is the pointing vector, energy, second, energy per second per area, okay? Since the, they are oscillating with frequency, we have to take the one time average of the frequency to, through the that one time average for one cycle we have one over two. This is a vectorial quantity taking the dot product with the perpendicular to the surface introduce a scalar quantity that becomes intensity. Uh, this result not necessarily be real if but power per area it should be some real number, you have to take that the real part if we get an imaginary number. Okay? So this is energy per second per area. And this is also energy per second per area through the surface of the conductor. Okay? Any point on the so any point of the conductor has same power loss because it's flat. Okay? Now let us calculate this. E cross H complex conjugate at the surface of the conductor uh, could be written in the following. So I'll take the, I'll write the everything in terms of H because H is more dominated. I would write I could write in terms of the electric field, but that is more convenient for me. Uh, so this is the electric field, this is the H. So let me write this as a minus H H complex conjugate cross and cross H. What I did here basically I switched the order of the cross product. Instead of writing N cross H, N cross H cross H complex conjugate, I switched the order, therefore I put a minus sign here. And I have some coefficient here. And what is that coefficient? Here I have the coefficient, this stuff, square root of mu frequency over 2 conductivity and I have a complex number there, 1 minus i. This minus sign because I switched the order of the cross product. This is E cross H, I write H cross E. I'll get the positive result. So what is this? What is this? That is double cross product. A dot C, A square along N. And that is nothing but H magnitude square along n and you have minus mu 
frequency over 2 sigma 1 minus i. This is the power loss at the surface of the conductor. I evaluate this at xi equal to 0. Put xi equal to 0 in both terms. So e cross h along n, you have a n, n dot n will be 1. You have a minus sign and minus sign that will be positive. And all together, all together, we are going to obtain the following. We have minus sign. We have another minus sign and we have 1 over 2 for the time average and we have the coefficient mu frequency over 2 conductivity 1 minus i times. So I should take the real part of this, real part of this is h square. or in your book notation just h square. So when I substitute there I take the real part of this. So the bottom line is the following. That term is equal to the following. So let me write that the power loss per area at the surface of the conductor to here. Power loss per area is equal to uh, plus 1 over 2 mean frequency over 2 uh, conductivity or you can write this in, ter in terms of the following. So let me write both of them. 1 over 2 mu frequency over to conductivity h square and that is equal to 1 over 4 mu frequency times the skin depth h square. So these are the same thing because you can write this in the following form. You say 1 over 2, 1 over 2 mu frequency times the skin depth. Skin depth is square root of 2 mu frequency sigma and this will be the depth. So you can write this coefficient in terms of skin depth in the following form. So Indeed, they are the same thing. Uh, why they are the same thing? Because when you take to the inside, that becomes square root of mu frequency over uh, conductivity. And if you take this to the in as a 4, that becomes 1 over 4. So this presentation is the power loss at the surface of the conductor in terms of what? Uh, second depth. This presentation is, is the power loss at the surface of the conductor in terms of conductivity. So if you have a perfect conductor, skin depth is what? If you have a perfect conductor, what should be the skin depth? Zero. Zero. Or conductivity should be what? Infinity. So, and that means that if you have a perfect skin depth is zero, there is no power loss in the conductor. What happens? Everything will be reflected. We can use as a mirror if you want, or we can use a, these good conductors in the waveguides because you can transmit the waves back and forward reflection is very long distances. But so in order to have some practice more, what we are going, we calculated the power loss per area using the fields of the electromagnetic weight uh, or the fields, fields at the surface of the conductor. We calculate the fields in the conductor and we evaluate the power loss at the surface of the conductor. You can calculate the same thing using the what? Using the current density because we have some currents. The electromagnetic waves induce some currents there. 
And since you have a currency, you can calculate that the power loss per area. So let us calculate the same thing in a different way. At least let me show you how you are going to do. So this is one way. So let us do this calculation in a different way. Different way easy again. We have the current density and current density is equal to conductivity times the electric field in the conductor the induced electric field in the conductor due to the electromagnetic waves, incoming electromagnetic waves. And what is this? That is equal to what? Okay, pick up this term. So you have one over conductivity times the skin there. If you multiply this term by uh, conductivity, this term will cancel out. You will get the following. Conductivity divided by conductivity over skin depth. 1 minus i and cross h parallel and you have e to the minus psi 1 minus i over skin depth Am I correct? Minus one, okay, that, that's fine. So, how we can calculate that the power loss in the conductor due to the ohmic losses? This is the ohm slope. Current density is related with the electric field is ohm slope. So do we know that the, do we know that the power loss per volume due to the ohmic losses? We know this. So we see this. So if we have a Lorentz force, which is Q plus V cross B. In the first hour, I think I write this as a V over C. That was in Gaussian unit. Now we are working in standard units. Okay, so that was so erase the C. In the, in, if you look at the uh, notes in the first hour, that was V over C. We know that the magnetic force does not work, so we can replace the charge with the charge density. We can calculate that the we can calculate that the work done uh, by the Lorentz force and we will end up with the following term. So that will be the following. Charge density E dot dx over dt through the volume have to be equal to power. So same thing. Take the dark product with dx. That is the work. Instead of dx, write that, write that, but uh, we velocity times dt. This v cross b dot v will be zero. And this is dv. Divide to the dt, that will be the power. And if you integrate this through the volume, so if you put a charge density, charge per volume, you should write that the volume element. So if you integrate this, you will find that the total part. So, that was equal to charge density. This is the velocity uh, of the charges, and that is nothing but Q 
current density and altogether that is equal to current density dot E B cube uh, X prime X prime is the volume element but this is the power per time so if you integrate for one hour a cycle you will introduce the extra cycle one over two like in the pointing uh, vector so if you integrate this one cycle and the power loss due to the ohmic losses will be the current density dot e for one cycle will introduce one over two factor over there so Basically, this is the power and power losses per volume d cube x prime will be 1 over 2 j dot e and d cube x prime in our problem is the following. What is the d cube x prime? That is the region here. So you can choose a, a small area and a small thickness. So this will be the area here. So let me write here. This should be the area and the high the thickness will be the d psi. So basically this is nothing but uh, area element times the d psi. So from here you can write that the power loss per area in the following form. So this is the repetition of what we have done in first day of the course. You can write that the from here let me write this power loss due to the ohmic losses per volume that is the dE times the d psi will be 1 over 2 j dot e and so j and e are related with the conductivity therefore that is equal to 1 over 2 conductivity j square multiply by conductivity divide by conductivity you will get that and power loss per area due to, due to the ohmic losses will be the following 1 over 2 conductivity times the absolute value of the current density integrated psi. And the integration range is from the surface to the infinity. But we know that the fields will decay exponentially. So basically this will be the power loss per area. I know that the current density, I can substitute that and I can take the integral easily. So maybe I can do at the moment quickly. So then we can give a break. So current density is related with 1 over delta 1 minus a and, and the other terms. So what we are going to obtain? 1 over 2 times sigma i hat. From here, I will have 2i, but if I take the absolute value, I will get a 2. Divided by delta square. So did you get this? Absolute value from the absolute value 1 minus i. What is the 1 minus i absolute value? Hmm? Two. 2. That should be 2, yes. 
and we have one over delta that is one over delta square and j square and you have n cross h n cross h square and what is the absolute uh, value of that term this i is one because i i i complex conjugate doesn't contribute this will be what 0 to infinity e to the minus psi minus 2 psi because of the square divided by delta integrated by psi and this integral will be delta over 2 2's will be cancelled one of the psi will be cancelled and, and you will obtain that the uh, power loss per area power loss per area due to the ohmic losses uh, 1 over 2 conductivity times the skin depth and cross h square and if you put the value of the skin depth there the value of the skin depth is 2 over mu frequency conductivity one half if you plug the skin depth there and if you do the cancellation so if you put this up and insert the, uh, the conductivity inside the square root of 2 you will get 1 over 2 1 over 2 square root of mu frequency over 2 times conductivity and cross H. So let us control the result. But I said to you, instead of skin depth, substitute this. Mu frequency goes up and conductivity goes into the square root of 2 and 2 is done. So look at the look at the power loss per area using the Ohm's law and look at the power loss per area at the surface using the fields. Are they the same? Hmm? As a component uh, coefficient wise that is the same. And what is n cross h? Is n and h are perpendicular to each other? Yes. yes. Therefore, this is nothing but h square. Because sine 90, you have it. So basically, calculating the power losses using the fields in the conductor or calculating the power losses in the conductor using the Ohm's law is giving us the same same result. And why this is important? Because if we are going to calculate the attenuation coefficients during the reflections, we have to calculate the power loss at the surface of the wake height briefly. And how we are going to calculate this or that, that is the same. We have to know that the uh, magnetic field at the surface of the conductor, then we can calculate it. So, after the break, I am going to continue with the what? Uh, cylindrical cavities and uh, wave guides. So, I will write the Maxwell's equations, wave equations, and I will try to apply these Maxwell's equations for the, to the waveguide. Okay, so far we learned that the, how the electromagnetic wave behave near the conductor, how the E and B fields in the conductor, how the power loss, uh, how the power is absorbed in the conductor, or how, how is the power loss per area. 
they are related with the field, magnetic field, magnitude and related with the skin depth. If the skin depth goes to zero, we don't have the power law. We don't have the power loss, everything reflected back. Okay. So let us give a break. Then we can continue.